One of the important considerations in treating platinum-sensitive relapse is not only bevacizumab, as we've discussed, but PARP inhibitors. In uh, uh, early 2017, PARP inhibitors, first niraparib, and then ultimately olaparib in August of 2017, and ultimately rucaparib, which is pending, were approved in platinum-sensitive relapsed ovarian cancer. So in this particular patient, she received carboplatin paclitaxel bevacizumab, but she could have received carboplatin paclitaxel, and then if she responded, which was likely, PARP inhibition maintenance. And again, we have two FDA-approved options, niraparib and olaparib, and soon a third, likely rucaparib. And the way that works is that patients that respond to platinum again have trouble repairing the platinum-induced double-stranded breaks, which is what BRCA is, and PARP works in BRCA patients, and PARP inhibition works in patients that respond to platinum. And that's why it's FDA approved in that setting. Personally, this particular patient was treated with bevacizumab because she could be treated with PARP anytime. Okay? Definitely she could get it as maintenance, but she can also get it as treatment. There are now two PARP inhibitors that are also FDA approved in treatment. So PARP inhibitors, you got two choices, maintenance and platinum sensitive relapse or treatment. And the treatment indication for a lap rib is three prior regimens and a germline BRCA mutation. And for RUCAP rib, it's two prior regimens, germline or somatic. So I don't know what the definition of a regimen is. Maybe bevacizumab counts as a regimen. But in any scenario, after she gets carboplatin paclitaxel bevacizumab, as she did, she will then have the option to get treatment PARP inhibition. I get it that the sequence could have been reversed. We don't have any randomized trials comparing which should be used first. I do know, though, that giving bevacizumab probably doesn't, re first, does not reduce the activity of PARP inhibitor treatment. So that's why this was done, because GOG213 shows a five-month improvement in overall survival when bevacizumab is added to carboplatin paclitaxel and platinum-sensitive relapse. Just this case. She got it. She had a long second progression-free survival, and now she can get a PARP inhibitor when she gets her second recurrence. Which PARP inhibitor? It's tough. As I said, we, we got two that are labeled in treatment. Uh, they have some different side effects, but these PARP inhibitors are more similar than different. And the chance of responding to a PARP inhibitor in this setting after two lines of therapy and platinum sensitive and BRCA germline mutated is more than 50%. She'll respond. So think of it. She was diagnosed in 2014. She's had two chemotherapy regimens, carboplatin and paclitaxel twice. She had this uh, uh, almost a year of maintenance bevacizumab. And it's been four years. And now she's going to embark upon PARP inhibition, and the chance of responding is greater than 50%. And then after that, she has many other options. She's still got pegylated liposomal doxorubicin. and she's still got topatecan. She's still got weekly paclitaxel. She's still got clinical trials. So this will be a patient who easily lives five, six, seven years. And she's already lived four almost. And she's only had two five-month periods of cytotoxic chemotherapy. The era of targeted therapy in ovarian cancer is here. And I've reviewed bevacizumab. It's approved in platinum-sensitive relapse. It soon will be probably approved frontline. I've told you about two PARP inhibitors, which are labeled in maintenance platinum-sensitive relapse, olaparib and niraparib. And I've told you that you can have treatment PARP inhibitors with the appropriate number of lines of prior therapy and a molecular signature, rucaparib and olaparib. So that's four FDA-approved targeted therapies that I've shared with you. We're there. Immuno-oncology is next. Antibody drug conjugates are next. Combinations are next. Other biomarkers are next. The future is bright, and it is satisfying, finally, to take care of ovarian cancer patients because our options are so vast.